This is Twit. The power of capitalism is that when uh, somebody becomes wealthy, makes money, they reinvest it. They make money out of innovation. They don't. It's not a zero-sum game. They don't become, and I think you could say this is the case with Google, Facebook, Amazon, maybe not Amazon so much, but certainly Google and Facebook. They added value, and that's where all that money came from and all that power came from was adding value. It wasn't they took it from somebody else. Uh, so everybody acknowledges that these are valuable entities. They provide value in our life. But there's also seems to be a growing awareness that they have become so big that they have too much power now. Uh, it, it's different for each one, but let's use Facebook as an example. Uh, Margaret Sullivan in the Washington Post, this is again from Ben Smith's uh, column, wrote, would Donald Trump be president today if Facebook didn't exist? Although there is a long reason of list of reasons for his win, there's increasing reason to believe the answer is no. And the more we learn about, you know, the Russians very effectively using Facebook and so forth. Uh, that, so that's where there's that's a some... bit specious. That's a bit of a specious argument. Is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, it is because, because, um, you know, uh, uh, would and X then, but that's exist from the without, left without radio? Would X exist without TV? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would X exist without whatever? But it, but radio and TV uh, are an industry. Facebook is a company. Well, and we used to have fair fair. Is it the fairness doctrine? Yeah. When we were talking about political parties, I mean, TV and radio. Back in the day, you had to publish. Is it the fairness doctrine, Jeff? This yeah. it's yes. been a long time since my media law classes. Yes, it's the fairness doctrine. <laughs> But 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 I have so, to say, there's a difference between saying I don't want to shut down radio and TV because that's shutting down an industry, but and saying there's a company that had one company that wields too much power. Well, that's a Twitter, very different the president's thing. not on Facebook. The president's on Twitter. Let's remember, it's not just. Well, one we're company. having this debate about like Sinclair with uh, its pro-Trump agenda and letting the FC, FCC no. approve. And its I, I mean, so lest we sound too left-wing, on the other side, many conservatives say that these. Companies, Facebook and Google, are fostering a progressive agenda that they don't like. So it's that's the point, is it's coming from both sides now. Uh, there's a general building consensus that these companies are too big yeah, and There's too also powerful. a general... You, you, I'm sorry, I interrupted. There, there's a general... The, 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 the institutions that are challenged by these new companies and by this new reality of the internet are fighting back because they're challenged, because they're disrupted. Right. And, I understand and that. You're, what, talking, you're talking about newspapers, yeah. for example. I understand that. Yeah. But that's not the only place this is coming from. The, it doesn't become a problem if it's just newspapers or if it's just the left wing or if it's just the right wing. But when every when you get these unholy coalitions between all these groups, if I were Google or Facebook or Amazon, oh, they I'd should be, be threatened. They should absolutely. So I want to go back to something we said last week because, because it was on the show last week that the story of the $100,000 Russian political ads on Facebook broke right and, and 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 we were talking about it and my first thought was um well no matter what my first thought was uh, it was wrong um whatever it was uh, <laughs> but um uh i in first blush i wondered whether facebook could have known they were russian and that's key uh if they were ads they were ads uh there's another talk about saying that facebook should be under the same regulation stacy as television and should be transparent about this this to me becomes pretty easy now, and Facebook's not doing this. Facebook should disclose the ads and the targeting uh, that was used for them. It should expose how the manipulation occurs. The, 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 the public deserves to know this. Well, and, wait, and though. So, what? So, so tied to that, though, we have a story about the this. It's not the sponsored tag, the controversial tag, not actually helping on Facebook. And I'm wondering if what you're proposing would have the same lack of effectiveness. Well, I think okay, it's a good idea. Things. No, right. Okay. So let me, let me answer that first. Uh, it's not, it's the disputed tag, which is disputed, the fact checking thing. And here's a, here again, I'm going to criticize Facebook. Uh, that was a, a study, one study with uh, uh, interviews outside of Facebook saying that uh, it all, uh, the, 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 the fact checker dispute only affects a certain amount of, of uh, attitude towards something that's disputed. And if it's ideological one way or the other, it could actually make, it, make, make the spraying of it worse. The problem here, too, is that Facebook is not being transparent about this. And, and journalists are asking Facebook, because journalists are helping with the fact checking, would you please give us the data on this? That's complicated to this extent. When the disputed tag comes up on Facebook, um, Facebook itself reacts to that. 
right? They, they, I think that they don't promote stuff that's been disputed now because they don't want to be accused of pushing what is seen clearly as fake. Um, so you can't separate the user behavior, the impact on the user behavior from the impact on Facebook's algorithm. Nonetheless, mm. in both these cases, Facebook should be open. So the, the difference between that, Stacey, and the political ads is that's not about trying to expose the political ad to the user. It's about exposing this set of political ads and their targeting criteria to researchers and media so we can understand what did the Ruskies do and how did they do it? Who do they Got go it. after with what and what impact have they had? So that's more for researchers than it is for the end user. Um, uh, and it, but both cases are about being transparent. And you're right, Leo, if this kind of stuff's going to go around, it would only be wise of them to say, let's go over head over heels to be transparent, to be open, to get the help of researchers to figure out what's going on here and do something about it.